bar, ba, co, a, barbacoa. Come on, let's get started. Todo queda sabroso. Hey everyone, I'm Chef Patrick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make homemade barbacoa for tacos in a quarter of the time that it usually takes to make it. And it is going to be absolutely delicious. And so today we're going to do a version of barbacoa using more conventional methods, but not lose much of that flavor. Traditional barbacoa would include a sheep, an older sheep like mutton or lamb or goat. More conventional cuts would include beef cuts like beef cheeks, oxtail, but the more popular cut is actually a chuck roast. And that's what I'm going to use today. But this cut actually is a little bit leaner compared to other chuck roasts. And the reason why is because we're cooking in the pressure cooker and I really don't want to draw out too much moisture, which if you have a fatty piece of meat in the pressure cooker, it can tend to do that. So I'm using a leaner cut and it's going to result in a super tender, delicious barbacoa. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut this into smaller pieces just so that I can decrease the cook time. Not only does it cook faster, but the marinade that we're going to use is going to permeate that meat a lot faster. So let's trim this up. Now, this has a little bit of fat, as you can see in the meat, but also here. And so I don't wanna get rid of that, but I do wanna get rid of this what they call the silver skin. That's tough, that doesn't break down. And so that will actually shrink the meat and doesn't provide any type of benefit, so we'll remove that. Then we're going to take this and we're just going to break it down into smaller chunks. And as you can tell, there are, is some marbling of meat, so it's not absence of fat, it's just leaner than most uh, chuck roast that you'll find in the supermarket. Now that that's done, we're just going to put it in a bowl and prepare the marinade. Okay, so the first step in the marinade is toasting off some spices. I'm gonna to add to a very dry pan one tablespoon of cumin seeds. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of allspice berries, about a half a teaspoon cloves. I have here Mexican cinnamon. You can omit this if you want to, but I like the aromatics of cinnamon, so I'm gonna add that. I have some pieces of bay leaf or laurel leaves, and I'm simply going to toast those in the pan once they're nice and toasted we're going to grind them up in a spice grinder you can smell that perfume just wafting it smells wonderful now we're just going to take this and add it to a spice grinder grind it up and then move on to the next part of the marinade okay so in the same hot pan that i toasted the spices i'm going to toast the chilies first i'm starting with Guajillo chilies. These are a very flavorful chili, but they're mainly going to give that marinade its beautiful red color. I removed all the seeds. I'm also going to be using the ancho. This chili has more depth of flavor and really enhances this dish. And you know that the chilies are in there. So we're going to add about three of those. Then I'm going to add, this is called chili morita. And the reason why I'm adding this is because it adds a little bit of smokiness. If you smell it, it almost smells like hickory or mesquite and it has that really smoky flavor so i'm adding that to the pan and simply toast this for a couple minutes okay our chilies are toasted and now we're just going to add some water and that water is simply going to help the chilies get soft so we can blend it up okay in the blender cup here, I have the chilies that ha are now softened. To that, I'm going to add one chipotle pepper. And the reason I'm adding this is not only to add more smoky content to kind of replicate the barbacoa being roasted in a pit, but also I want a little bit more spiciness. So I'm going to add one chipotle. Also to that, I'm adding a quarter onion and about five garlic cloves. Also to that, I'm adding the spices that I toasted and now have ground off. If you could smell the fragrance of this mixture, it is incredible. So I'm gonna add that. I'm also gonna add about a couple teaspoons of salt and I may add some later, but for now, two teaspoons is fine. Then I'm also adding a quarter cup apple cider vinegar and the juice of two limes. Now I'm going to put the cover on. Now we're going to blend. Okay, now I'm gonna take my 
beef that we cut earlier and I'm simply going to add that marinade. I'm gonna reserve just a little bit. And all we're going to do is just mix this up. I wanna to try to mimic how the babacoa is traditionally made. So when it's in the pit roasting, it's there's no like additional liquid. It's just this marinade permeating through that meat as it's cooking. And so I wanna resemble that as much as possible. So I'm just gonna marinate this for about an hour. Then we'll get into the pressure cooker. Okay, so now it's time to pressure cook our beef. I'm using the Instant Pot. It is a great tool. I've used it in several of my videos. I'm gonna leave a description down below where you can find it online. Okay, so I'm gonna take the lid off of my Instant Pot. And if you can see, I have a insert here. And the reason for that is because I'm going to add liquid. I didn't add liquid to the beef mixture, but I need to add liquid to the Instant Pot because that's what's going to create that steam. But I placed the insert so that it keeps the liquid and the meat separated. So remember that reserve marinade? I just combined it with a little bit of water and that's what I'm going to use on the bottom. And now we're simply going to line the inside of this Instant Pot with banana leaves. And this is going to help with creating that steam. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take that beef that has been marinating. It smells wonderful. And we're simply going to place it inside those banana leaves in the pot. And like I said, the banana leaf not only is it going to impart flavor, but it's also going to help make this meat, this babacoa, nice and juicy and tender. Add some of that reserve marinade on top, right? That's what's going to flavor our beef. Make sure it's covered completely, just like that. All right, and then we're going to place our lid. Make sure your vent knob is in the sealing position. That's going to seal all that and trap all that moisture inside the pressure cooker. Okay, so we're gonna hit our pressure cook button and the time is automatically set at one hour. That's what we want it. And now it's going to start. Once that pressure is built up, the timer is going to start counting down. And in an hour, we'll have nice and tender barbacoa. Okay, so I waited about 10 minutes until after the pressure cooker stopped because when I release the valve, I don't want a lot of that liquid spraying all over the place. Then release the valve. Notice how not much going on here. And now we're going to let that completely release this pressure, then we'll open it up. Okay, so it is completely depressurized. Now it's safe to open. We'll take off the lid. Okay, so here we have barbacoa, that beautiful braised beef. And if I just take a fork to it, it literally falls apart, shreds, so easily. I'm going to add some of that broth that accumulated at the bottom of the pan. Add a little salt, mix that together. And so here we have our barbacoa ready to go. Now we're gonna plate up. Okay, I have a plate here with a little banana leaf on it. Okay, so I have my tortillas here that I warmed up in this tortilla warmer, pretty cool. All you do is pop it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. You got nice warm tortillas. And so now I'm going to add some tortillas to the plate. I'm gonna take that barbacoa that has been pressure cooked in the Instant Pot. And it is absolutely delicious. Our salsa verde. Oh, look at that. We just want to add a generous amount right on top of that barbacoa. And we're going to add some diced white onion mixed in with some cilantro right on top. Check that out. 
now it's time to give it a little taste. Mm. One more bite. Tilt the head. That barbacoa is so rich, yet it's so tender. It may not have been pit roasted, didn't take 12 hours, but man, it's good. Mm. Thanks for watching. If you really like this video, don't forget to like and share and click that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all new content. And remember, food can look good, but if it doesn't taste good, then your cooking is in vain. So make it sabroso.